Hello everyone and welcome to what will be a let's play of Clue Classic, a game of course based on the classical Clue board games, um, also known as Cluid, Cluedo, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Uh, in Norway, you know, growing up I had the version Cluedo, but I've grown used to, or Cluedo, Clu, Clu, Cluedo, whatever, and I've grown used to calling it that, but then growing older again I encountered that it was actually named Clue. And I've actually been a pretty huge Clue fan for most of my life. I found it a very interesting aspect of a board game, like a very different kind of board game. Uh, that required both deduction skills, but it could also have, you know, a luck component in it, definitely. Uh, and I was very happy back in like 2009, 2010 when I discovered that there was a game that I actually liked made about it. Because I have played a lot of the different Clue variants in video games. Uh, for an example, I used to play one for, I think it was Sega Genesis. Hated it. Horrible controls. I did not know how to do it at all. I just never got the hang of it. This one is just so straightforward, so to the point, so brilliant. So, uh, it still happens occasionally. I have this game continuously on uh, as a shortcut on my uh, desktop background. So I can just pop it in and pop it in. <laughs> Open it up and play around of Clue, um, the computers do a sufficient enough job to challenge me, they might even win a lot in this let's play. Um, anyway, uh, for those of you who don't know the basics of the game, I will explain that after we meet the storyline. Um, we see the main characters in the background, so for some reason we see Miss Scarlet twice, her face and her body. We see Colonel Mustard, we see Professor Plum, we see Miss White, we see... Is it... Pastor Green? I should remember this in English, actually. And Miss Peacock, undoubtedly my favorite. I mean, she's everything I aspire to be when I grow old. Except, you know, a male version. Yeah. And maybe less rich. But whatever. <laughs> we'll see the opening intro here. Uh, basically, the meaning of this game, or the main purpose of this game, is to discover which one of these six murdered Mr. Body, or Mr. Black as he was called in uh, my version, or the one I grew up with. So let's see the storyline here. Well, looks like this is going to be a long night. Tudor Mansion, the scene of the crime. Oh, Inspector Brown, thank goodness you're here! The road is washed out. You'll have to spend the night. We were all here enjoying the evening. Everyone was in good spirits considering the weather. It's our immersion that knocked out the power. I'm never gonna remember any of these ways, uh, like hmm. different things. Everything was dark. You couldn't tell what was going on. The next time I saw Mr. Body, he was dead. And that's it. That's the intro story. Uh, basically, you can choose between any of these six main characters. I'm gonna do one episode, it's gonna be six episodes in this uh, let's play, all together. I'm gonna play one of each character, or each character. Uh, which is gonna be interesting, we're gonna of course play on the highest difficulty. I'm gonna lose half of the cases, because uh, when you play Inspector level, I feel like it's pretty much all about luck, but I'll come back to that. <laughs> we'll start out as Miss Scarlet. Miss Josephine Scarlet. Seductive Josephine Scarlet is the daughter of Mrs. Patricia Scarlet Peacock. With jealousy and envy the foundation of their relationship, the two seldom speak. An aspiring actress, her aspirations far exceed her talent. Career in a tailspin, Miss Scarlet focused her attention on a brand new interest, rich all widowers. As a result, the London tabloids had a field day covering her exploits. To avoid more bad publicity, she reluctantly joined her mother for a long holiday at the Tudor Mansion. Uh, as we play each of the characters here, we're gonna read her backstories, but this is gonna be the Miss Scarlet episode. It's gonna be an introduction, so to speak. Use the process of elimination to determine which three cards are in the confidential case file envelope. The three cards reveal who done it, where, and with what weapon. So basically, uh, each room each potential murder weapon and each suspect each have their own card, which are distributed equally amongst all six players, which leaves three cards. One room, one weapon, one suspect. 
that's where the murder happened, that's where uh, what weapon was used, and that was the person who murdered Mr. Body. Uh, it's really as straightforward as that, and what you do each round, you roll a dice. Uh, I was used rolling two in the board game version, but in this game it's two when I think about it. Never mind. Um, and if you get into a room that round, then you are able to make a suggestion. Let's say, for example, I say, Colonel Mustard did it with the rope, and I am standing in the dining room. Then, starting with the next player, and uh, the next player, they will then... Do I have any of these cards on my hands? If they don't, they will pass. If they do, they will show one of the cards to you. And then you can be like, uh-huh, it wasn't a rope, because Miss Peacock has the rope, so I'll cross that off my list. If you have two cards, uh, for example, if Miss Peacock had Colonel Mustard and rope, she gets to choose which one to show. So you never, you never really unveil more than one card at a time. However, the way that you do the elimination process here is that, of course, if Mrs. White doesn't have the Colonel Mustard card, and then Miss Peacock shows you the rope, then you already have established that three people here, approximately, does not have Colonel Mustard. You don't know if any of the last two sus or so players have Colonel Mustard, but you know that there's, you know, okay, there's a bigger chance that he might be the character that murdered Mr. Body. So you have to make notes, and that's the nice thing here. Uh, you have a notebook, which you'll use quite diligently. So I know that... The rope and the wrench, they are not the murder weapon, and I also know that the murder did not happen in the ballroom. Those are my free cards. Everybody else also has free random cards. You can get free rooms, you can get free weapons, you can get free suspects. So for me right now, I don't have any suspect cards. So I have no idea who the murderer might be. Uh, Miss Scarlet always starts. It's always Scarlet, Mustard, White, Green, Peacock, and Plum. I rolled a really low score, so I won't be able to get into any rooms this turn. But that's okay. Neither will Colonel Mustard. Uh, by the way, whenever you play this game, the enemy who gets to accuse or suggest uh, a possible murderer first always suggests you for some reason. Let's just wait to see if that happens now, too. It's just something I've noticed. Okay, it seems like everybody is uh, rolling pretty low today. Interesting. Mrs. White is my favorite, by the way. No, it's Miss Peacock. I can't decide. Miss White was my favorite when I was young, and then Miss Peacock kind of took over and I became a teenager. Kevin's <laughs> Green made it to the ballroom, and he's gonna suggest <clears throat> Miss Scarlet, surprise, surprise, with the candlestick. And then you can see this fancy little. I really like it. <laughs> so we now. Okay, so here comes the, the way I do this elimination process. Uh, we can now think that green does not have my card, or the card with Miss Scarlet on it, since he suggests it, he wants to find it, you know? So I write green minus, Peacock had something, I'm not sure if it was Miss Scarlet or if it was the candlestick or if it was the ballroom, I just know she has something, so I'm gonna write Peacock question mark. Same thing for the candlestick. I don't write green minus on the ballroom. Uh, oh, that's because I have it. But even if I didn't have it, I wouldn't have done it because... Um, you can't choose which room that you want to suggest. That's just a room you end up in. And I am not sure if the computer goes directly for rooms he doesn't have as their card, or if they also you know, if just wants to suggest it to other things. I don't know. So I never really write down, for example, then now green ballroom minus. I, I would never do that. Maybe I should. I don't know, actually, but I'm taking my chances. Like right now, for example, Peacock does not enter the conservatory. Does that mean that she doesn't have the conservatory or that she has the conservatory card? I don't know. And I don't want to fall to mind games. <laughs> uh, since I was suggested in the ballroom by Mr. Green. I can decide to make a suggestion there. That's what happens when you're moved to a new room as part of the suggestion thing, so you don't really get landlocked, you know? The, if you played with five human players, they could all be really rude to you and just keep suggesting you all over the map. And you would roll the dice and maybe never make it anywhere. So I think it's just kind of like a uh, balancing suggestion, because of course when you're suggested there, the player moves there. That's just a rule. Um, I already have the ballroom card, so I don't want to stay there. 
I want to roll the dice and I want to go to the kitchen. Each of the corner rooms has a secret passage to another corner room. Uh, I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, I always start at the top, hmm. so I'm just saying Colonel Mustard with the knife. And let's see what happens. Uh-huh, we learned a lot. First of all, green has the knife card. Uh, I normally write green 1, green 2, and green 3 for all of the different cards. Because, you know, eventually, I've had it happen on occasion, uh, I'm stuck with, for an example, that green is the last person that could possibly have the lead pipe card. I haven't seen him not have it, and I haven't seen him have it. I just know everybody else doesn't have it. It happens on occasion. And then, I actually see that green, I already know which three free green car cards green have. <laughs> then I of course know that, aha, uh -huh, the lead pipe is the murder weapon because there's no way he can have it. That's why it's kind of important to keep track of who has what, and that's why I also add a number so I can like know one, two, three. Um, but what we learned? We learned that Mustard doesn't have the Colonel Mustard card. We learned that White doesn't have the Colonel Mustard card. We learned the same for the kitchen thing too. Which is pretty nice. Colonel Mustard wants to keep on suggesting things in the kitchen. Where I moved him to accuse him of hmm. murder. He keeps on the Colonel Mustard note, and okay, he just wants to learn the same as me then, basically. So we'll just see the same result here. Knife will, um, or Green will tell him uh, about the knife. That's nope. I saw the knife, it's totally safe. We have a. Uh, it's securely locked in a safe or whatever. <laughs> White moves to the ballroom. I really like those small intros, by the way. It's so fantastic. <coughs> Caesar is saying that I killed him with the revolver. Rude. I would do no such thing. Well, the ballroom card we know that uh, they don't have. The revolver card green doesn't have. I would say then white doesn't have it. Peacock might have it. You might be tempted now to think that, ah, Peacock has this card and since she's now been in it twice, but I never take that chance. Like, yes, she has the possibility of having it twice, but she has three cards altogether. We don't know which three cards that is, so don't jump the gun. You might, if you want to take a chance, but I never do. I'd rather play it safe than sorry. <sighs> Mr. Green suggests that Mrs. Peacock used a wrench on Mr. Body in the conservatory. And Miss Peacock is just like... No? Uh, I know it isn't a wrench, because I own that. Peacock might have an alibi for herself. Or she has the conservatory card. Because, again, as I said earlier, she just passed it. She didn't go inside it. Does that mean that she knows that's not the murder weapon? I don't know. It's driving me a bit insane. I kind of want to get that out of the way right now to see if my theory is correct. Hmm. But Peacock goes to the lounge to, profess, to suggest Professor Plum with the robe. Which, of course, I know better than that. But that means that Peacock and Plum does not have the Professor Plum card. And the robe card is mine. And that Professor Plum does not have the lounge card. We're closing on the murder weapon, though. There's only 50% uh, left since we started with two cards. <clears throat> when it comes to uh, the suspects, we have no clue what's going on here. Mr. Green with the wrench in the lounge. Well, again, I have, you know, <laughs> little old me. <laughs> I know what happened with the wrench, apparently. But Plum doesn't have Mr. Green, and that's about it we learned, actually. We are now in the ballroom. I don't want to be in the ballroom because, you know, we have that card already. Let's go to the conservatory and get rid of a lot of things here now. Well, a lot of things. Uh, I want to suggest myself, actually. <coughs> with the candlestick in the conservatory. Because here, Peacock has the possibility for all three, so I know it's something, you know? <laughs> Okay, I am not the murderer. That's good to know. <laughs> so happy about that. I'm not a murderer. Uh, let's see. Mustard doesn't have it. White doesn't have it. 
green doesn't have it. That just means that it's either Peacock or Plum that can have the candlestick, so I'm gonna focus a bit on that. And the conservatory... Same, actually. It's pretty much only Peacock and Plum that can have that card, so... Learning a lot here. Learning a lot. I think I'm gonna stick around the conservatory a bit just to get rid of it. <clears throat> Never mind, I'm being moved to the study. Candlestick, good? Well, not good, because you know Peacock will show one card here anyway. Yeah, we didn't really learn anything here. We just learned this. Um, yep, nothing new, and we know Miss Scarlet did not do it. Uh, of course you can't be the murderer here. You can solve your own murder, or as it would be in the ending, you confess to the murder. Because it is totally random. Uh, so it's kind of weird that you go around trying to solve your own murder, but what can you do? Mrs. White suggests herself with the candlestick. Totally possible a possibility. Interesting to see what Peacock does here now. Peacock has then either the candlestick or the conservatory card. She really does. But Mrs. White, we learned a few things about her. Uh, that was it, right? Yes, white, green. Yes. Come on, Mr. Green. Mr. <clears throat> F. He suggests himself with the revolver. That's kind of brutal. Oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Peacock does not have the revolver. I know Green doesn't have it. There's only a muster that can have the revolver now. So that's the card I'm gonna focus on. And also, Mr. Green. Peacock does not have it. Plum does not have it. Mustard can have it. And White can have it. I'm gonna focus a bit more on Mr. Green then, actually. On the lounge, the lounge, the lounge. Also learned quite a bit there, too. White doesn't have it. Mustard might. Okay, this... Uh, okay, but now she goes to the conservatory. See, that's why I'm so confused about, like, what cards does she have or not. I can't base it on her just not wanting to go in a room. I think. Yeah, good idea there, Miss Peacock. Oh my. Well, we know it's not a revolver. It can be the conservatory. It can also... Well, it cannot... Okay, here we learn something then. Because it cannot be Mr. Green. Because we already excluded him twice there, actually. <laughs> then it's even more safe. Um, we know it's a revolver because there's only mustard. I usually write mustard only, uh, just to make sure. Mustard only, that can have the revolver. That means that the conservatory must actually belong to Plum. Did not expect that, I really thought it was Peacocks. Then if I could only remember what was suggested over there earlier. I don't though, unfortunately. Because then I could have learned a new card too, because I excluded two of them from Peacock. Shame. <laughs> Haven't been very lucky with the room so far, that's sad. Well, for all we now know, know now, blah blah blah, uh, this could be the right combination. I see mustard pops off into revolver continuously here though. Uh, we know Mr. Green, Mr. No, Professor Plum does not have the Mr. Green card. Uh, we didn't really learn anything here. We learned that Mustard might have the dining room card. But let's see, I am in the study. Sure, we can make a suggestion here. Um, we don't have that many notes on it. Uh, I want to get rid of... Either the revolver or the candlestick. I'm gonna stick with the revolver. I think uh, Colonel Mustard has it. I just wanna make sure. Yep. Interesting indeed. Uh, we haven't checked out the lead pipe whatsoever. That can still be the murder weapon. Uh, but I'm gonna get try to get rid of the candlestick first to get it with Mr. Green. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay. Peacock still might have the white card. Mustard does not, most likely. Candlestick, Peacock still the only possibility. Plum we don't know anything about. And green does not have the kitchen card. Not sure what I just did there, but hopefully everything is okay. Just give me a second. Okay, uh, I don't know what I managed to hit the windows button, I guess. But yes, we were done with this now. Uh huh. The most difficult ones to determine is, of course, the rooms. Hmm. Uh, it takes a while because there's like altogether more than there are suspects and weapons. And it's the most annoying since you can't choose it either. And that's more of the luck. What the hell just happened? Okay, Mrs. White, apparently you know something that we, do or we don't. <laughs> um, Professor Plum, where did you come from? Like, you murderous bastard. Okay, we have to we have to work hard here now. <laughs> I hope Mustard has two of those cards, to be quite honest. If not, it's gonna be a bit... Ah, there's so many possibilities. I'm afraid hmm. I'm gonna lose this one. Yes, everybody's gonna suggest that now, but Mustard's gonna give you just one reply, you know? Boom, there we go. Yeah, do it. Okay, well... Well, Mustard might have that one, too. Or for... Hmm... With the lead pipe, or lead, the lead pipe, lead pipe, lead. Whatever. But Mustard, have you shown a card? Yes. Uh, yeah, nothing new there. Yeah, if you're gonna suggest yourself with the lead pipe now too, I'm gonna go insane. Hmm. Okay, I'm insane. Blah, 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 or something. I, I do not have a card to show. I'm gonna go to the kitchen. I know Mustard doesn't have that one, so this will be a good way to eliminate either Professor Plum or the lead pipe. Hmm. Okay, Professor Plum is not guilty. That was the second mustard card, right? Yes, it is. So you still see here that either... Okay, the lead pipe or the study has to be... I'm starting to think that the lead... Lead? I don't know. The pipe <laughs> is probably the murder weapon. Hmm. Or the candlestick. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this is stressing me. We don't know much about mustard either as a suspect, do we? Well, now we know that... Well, now we know that he's the murderer! Yeah! <laughs> uh. Okay, I guess we're zero to one against... Um, against the computer in this game. But I was just lucky though, if we compare notes, you can see what they know. And he had no clue, like, what the room was and everything. That was just lucky. But, whatever, I think I, I will give myself a good second place. Like, oh. Okay, maybe a good third place, because I hadn't figured anything out yet. At least White had actually figured out it was for Colonel Mustard. Well, I am very sorry. <laughs> but we're going to call this an episode. Uh, Mrs. Scarlet did not hold up to the computers. Next episode we'll play with Colonel Mustard, today's murderer, and hopefully he will do slightly better. Anyways, see you next time. I've been a Gamer. Bye bye!